Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube covering HPE Big Data Conference 2016. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. We're winding down day two. This is the Cube, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Filippo Onorato is here, he's the CIO of lastminute.com. Really interesting website and, and travel site. Filippo, thanks very much for coming on the Cube. Thank you for inviting me. Welcome to, to, it's our pleasure. Welcome to America. We always I get envious when our Italian friends come on the Cube. You know, can't get enough of Italy, so it's, uh, it's great to see you. We'll reminisce after, but tell us about lastminute.com. Well, lastminute.com is a, a European-based group. It's a group of company. We have uh, several different brands, but of course, lastminute.com is the, is the best one, is the most uh, famous. Uh, our market span across Europe, but in reality, we have presence in 40 different countries, and we have the website that are translated in 17 different languages. We have actually the possibility, actually every year, we make 10 million person travel. So it's, a, it's a quite a big, uh, group in, in Europe and outside Europe as well. Um, Lastminute.com is actually UK was a UK business uh, um, travel company, but uh, the Bravo Fly Rumbo Group, that is uh, where I mean our company was coming from, acquired Lastminute.com two years ago from Sabre. That's actually an American company. Uh, okay. And that was actually uh, a pretty big acquisition that make us among the five most used uh, travel company in Europe. And, and so, you, so you're a global company. I mean, you yeah, do business we are global, globally. Yeah. And, and it's not just last minute and great deals. It's special experiences, like uh, as I was saying, I went on your website and it was stay at the palace or you know, some unique location. Explain that strategy. Yeah, and last minute, I mean, uh, given that is a common used word, in the, in the travel industry, I mean, meaning that you are uh, booking at the very last minute something that you will use in the next week or next uh, weekend or whatever, is becoming something that is actually an experience. Is the, uh, I mean, travel experience that will make you um, surprising yourself for your experience during your holidays. So it's something that uh, will make you experience a specific moment in your life with a, a, a very emotional, let's say, uh, travel um, I mean, experience again. Yeah. And, and is it, do you have a unique ability to identify inventory that is last minute and perhaps less expensive, uh, or not necessarily? Yeah, well, f from the very beginning of the company, we were actually growing so fast because we provide a very good service to the customer. I mean, we actually able to compare and no full uh, large amount of inventory from all the airlines, from other OTA, that make the, the, the visitor actually compare and find the best I mean, solution for him or her, uh, given the cost and given actually the, I mean, what is uh, the travel experience. So if you want to go from Milan to Boston, you don't want to go through Reykjavik, let's say. <laughs> and that's obviously <laughs> something that we care about. And the, and the presentation and the user experience is always our goal. So how, how does data, how do analytics figure into providing this unique user experience? Right? I think the, there's so many travel booking sites out there, it's really hard to distinguish one from another. What is you, how do you use data in a unique way? Actually, it's a massive amount of data. The more uh, data you have, the best uh, experience you can provide to the final user. What we are doing is also uh, measuring, uh, I mean, quite uh, precisely what the visitor are doing in our website to actually identify what are their needs and to provide the, the best presentation of what we have on our catalogs. I mean, our search engine that are spanning across all the different uh, standard and lines, the low cost and lines, or even, I mean, car rental or trains, because what we do actually is comparing airline, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, um, 
trip with uh, with trains because mm -hmm. sometimes more convenient for uh, for the customer to travel by train uh, than using the airplane to go to Milan or Milan Rome is typical. I mean, um, trip that you can do by train in three hours. It's There's a cost trade-off. Oh, of course, maybe, yeah, but at the end, yeah. what we are yeah. we are caring about is to present the most convenient option mm -hmm. for our visitors. And the more data we gather, the more we can uh, offer this uh, with this option. And you were talking off camera about how you actually, if I heard correctly, can help me with the the, the, the not only the booking but also the the check-in and Correct. describe that, because we have so many apps, we have a different app for every airline. Sure. And it's very frustrating, right? <laughs> exactly, that, that's the point. Um, we are in the, the best position to offer the most useful, I mean, uh, services to our customer, because we have a complete visibility on the, on the product offer and complete visibility also on the customer behavior. So we are just, the main in the middle. So what we can do is to provide to you a unique experience that actually gather together all the different user experience that you can have to different airlines. As you said, in your mobile phone you have uh, 10 different airlines that are providing um, the web checking, for example, service, and every single airline has a different user experience. So you will become mad <laughs> to, to, to actually do that. What we are providing instead is a unique user experience that gather together all the different uh, offering in the market and the consumer, the customer, can actually do that only once with our, I mean, um, in our app mm. in that case. And uh, it's okay, you're the CIO, yeah. we haven't talked about that, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a good topic in and of itself. So yeah. let's talk about what are the, what are the things that are it, the drivers in your business that are affecting you know, technology and direction. Well, um, by the way, uh, the technology, actually, the development is our core business. Because at the end, building the user experience is uh, strictly related to the technology that sits behind our, our websites. So, um, whatever we do in our company is uh, data-driven, because every single decision where we are doing in the, in the design of the website or in the marketing decision as well or in the sales or in finding the, the right product for the right audience, that is definitely driven by data. So uh, data warehouse, I mean data driven processes, uh, huge analytic platform is something that is core for our company. So paint a picture of the, the, the architecture, the apps, the, what does it look like if we peek inside uh -huh, the covers? That, that, uh, I, we can spend hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you an on-premise, are you primarily on-premise uh, arc infrastructure, or do you use cloud extensively? We are using all the cloud services that are available in the market, and by the way, the, the core website is on-premises. So we are using all, <laughs> yeah. we are using them all. And actually our plan now is to become uh, uh, cloud and on-premises, let's say, transparent. Mm -hmm. So our microservices uh, are actually a component that are made on purpose to be able to migrate from the cloud to the on-premises platform and to different cloud uh, platform. That, that is a, a unique, let's say, characteristic that we want to develop. We are just in the middle of this transformation. There are already part of the system that I have been through this transformation, and we can actually migrate those services from the on-premises platform to, let's say, name it, Google, uh, AWS, uh, um, Microsoft will you use platform. all of those clouds? Will, will you yeah, we use all. We use all. Because but the data is there. Because the data are there. I mean, the closer you get the algorithm to the data, the much faster you can you can get the response. As opposed to bringing the data to the algorithm is. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. You can you can spend quite a lot. Uh, and also, by the way, it's not only timing; it's also resources because. What you role pay does for oh, yeah, yeah, the bandwidth? Right, yeah. of course. Uh, what role does Vertica play, or or whatever Idle, whatever platform you use? Uh, Actually, we use Vertica. We use mm -hmm. HP Vertica, and uh, is our core data warehouse platform. 
um, not only for reporting and analytics, we are also using uh, some operational processes that are sit on top of the uh, Vertica platform. So, back to what you said about making cloud versus on-prem uh, transparent. Yep. Do you look, it sounds like you look at cloud more as an operating model than a place to put stuff. Is that fair? Sure. Okay, sure, sure. so what does that mean in terms of, from a practical standpoint of, and you're not there today, you admitted that no, nobody is, right? Mm -hmm. But what do you have to do to, to get to that point, and what does it mean for your organization? How do you rally everybody behind that vision? Um, that, 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 that is a pretty tricky and, yeah. um, um, uh, proposal to the business, actually, because you have to prove that uh, the cloud migration is actually providing a uh, competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. And it does, by the way, because um, the scalability and the availability that the cloud platform provides is impossible to, to match with the on-premises platform. But at the end, some core processes are required to run on-premises because of the performance reasons or because they are, um, let's say, owning privacy related data, so the sensitive data, mm -hmm. that you cannot, I mean, easily move to the, to, the, to, the, to the cloud, because also for the regulation, I mean, we are in Europe, you know that every single country has a slightly different regulation in terms of privacy. And, and but even if, well, but, but if you had, let me ask you a question on that, if you had a, a, a cloud in each of those countries, could you put it into the cloud? Is that, is that, yeah, yeah, that be acceptable, do, right? But, but then but you, you have, just, yeah. you have the, yeah. the cloud provider to certify himself yeah, yeah. that uh, actually is compliant with the regulation of the country where you are uh, selling the ticket. And it's just going to take time to, to get there. Time, yeah. what, what's the biggest challenge you see as a CIO? Uh, <laughs> there are quite a lot of different challenges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Top three. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. I think w one, uh, one definitely the major problem we have is uh, to get the access to the talent. I mean, in order to run the business like ours, with velocity, with agility, you need talent. You need people that actually have the passion for, for the job, and they, they know the business, and they actually very good in technology. And this combination, I mean, is not easy to find. Mm. How do you deal with that problem? You just go to war for talent. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that, that's the point. But yeah. I mean, it's also a question of a brand. Mm. You can sell your brand. I mean, if uh, the, the company overall is attractive, I mean, the, the talent will come. And, and again, we have a, a, a very long uh, um, path for, for the people that are actually hired in order to become really productive. So it's, we, we are spending an awful amount of time and resources in order to get there. Well, you could have a global recruiting program in Destination Italy. I mean, that's a pretty attractive. Yeah, that is pretty attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, Filippo, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, it was a, right. a real pleasure. Okay, keep it right there, buddy. Paul and I will be back with our last guest, actually, here live from HPE Big Data Conference. This is theCUBE, right back. Thank you.